Hi everybody, PJ Kwong from CBC Sports here with uh, Olympic champions Jamie Sale and David Pelche. So, 10 years ago today, February 17th, 2002, you got to the top of the podium to collect those gold medals. Can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Well, it was um, the day we remember the most was obviously the September, uh, February 11th, sorry, <laughs> uh, because that's the day of, of the long program. After that, uh, to be honest, it's a little bit of a, a blur. Uh, but I do remember that it was a, a relief that you know they, they made a decision. Depending on what decision it was, it was not it was out of our control. But they made a decision, and uh, we're happy that obviously we went home with the gold and uh, made the best out of a of a very weird situation, basically. So, Jamie, what about you? What was it like to walk in the building that night? Uh, you know what? It was actually um, a bit of a surreal moment because we were um, feeling really uncomfortable that there was so much. Um, I wouldn't say animosity or anything, but there was just not a really comfortable feeling for anybody. I think it kind of put a damper on the, the whole event, to be, to be honest. And uh, um, it made it a little bit awkward for the skaters. We all wanted to be happy for each other and support each other. But it was just, we felt it was really made for TV. Um, and instead of all of us celebrating the way we wanted to celebrate, it was, it was just for television. Uh, and we understood that, but um, as athletes, we would have chosen to do it a little bit different and, and gone up to uh, the big stage where we were on stage with bare naked ladies and just maybe d done it in front of the public that way. But um, like David said, we made the best of it, and I think the Russians handled themselves really well. Um, so. It was an in interesting evening. So here's something that I've always thought of, having been in that building with you guys in 2002. How professionally and personally would your lives have been different with just a silver medal? Well, that's a, a very tough uh, question to answer because that's not all what we, we that's all that we know, right? Uh, you can, I can take guess and make theories, but I could be right or wrong. So I don't know, I think, um, I don't know. I, professionally, I'm sure uh, we would have made a, a little bit less money. <laughs> uh, but I think the opportunities were going to be there, and maybe if we would have went home, I think a good theory would have be that would be to say that we would have probably stayed in, maybe for a year or two, um, maybe tried to win another world championships. You know who knows. Jamie, anything would have been different for you? Um, I just think that uh, you know, obviously, it would have been really to have won it outright and, and, and experience that moment of seeing our flag come down at number one, seeing our anthem, having that patriotic moment with your country. But um, no, I, I think that it, it definitely benefited us um, having this uh, crazy story happen and um, we became household names, I, I would say, even in North America, not just in Canada. That, so that was pretty special for us. And because of that, I believe that we did get some interesting, different endorsements and um, more long term, I think it's given us a little bit more longevity in our career. And uh, but we've also worked really hard you know, as professional skaters and on our brand. And, and I think that we're, we continue to be very professional and, and move forward in our lives. I think, I think it's safe that, to say that Jamie and I, for everything and the publicity that we got, it's safe to say that if they would give us a choice to have won the medal outright that night, we would have taken that over. Uh, maybe the exposure and some lucrative contracts. I think uh, as an athlete, you do this to for that moment of winning the gold medal and hearing the national anthem. You don't do it to, to be popular or to have sponsorship. You do it for the moment. And uh, we're not complaining, but if you give me the choice, I think I, I would throw away a little bit of money and exposure to relive that night and have that gold medal put around my neck. Uh, so February 11th. Do you know what? Here's the thing. Um, I, if you guys recognize it or not, every time that somebody went into uh, any kind of a newsstand or uh, your pictures were all across every magazine uh, that was published for those two weeks, it was wild. So not just across North America or Canada, you guys were um, uh, across the world. So you were talking a little bit earlier about your brand and um, I guess what I want to know is I want to know what goes into your decision to accept something professionally. Like, what do you have to think about? Well, uh, David and I believe that we've worked really hard over the last 10 years um, on our profession, in our professional world and on our skating. And, um, you know, we've been complimented many times that we've actually even improved and we feel that we've challenged ourselves even more every year and worked with so many different choreographers to, um, to be versatile and to be great show skaters. And that was what Christopher Dean worked with us on and Scott Hamilton always told us, even Kurt. 
so many other great professionals have helped us along the way. So, um, you know, and we've developed our own brand and our, and our look and, and the way we want to be perceived and the way we want to look. And so for us, it's really about making sure that it makes sense financially and even um, emotionally and for our son's sake. I mean, we don't want to just leave and take anything that comes our way. We have to, everything is uh, very thought out and has to make sense for us. Anything to add, David? Well, we, over the last 10 years, have learned what our value is in the market. And as Jamie said, that value has to be respected in order for us to leave our son behind for a certain amount of time. And uh, if we feel that, uh, you know, we think our value is higher than an offer, then, you know, it's, it's, it's just a decision that we have to make for, for Jesse's sake and for our own sake too, because we respect uh, our brand and the brand that we've been working on for 10 years. Okay, final question. It has been reported in the press. You guys are retiring, like right now, after the show. You want to set the record yeah, straight? We love uh, press. No, um, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes in interviews, um, they take a, a small little quote out of a long ex explanation, and that happens at times, and I know that a lot of skaters have experienced uh, this in a, in a bad way. Um, and unfortunately, it happens, but um, we have to uh, you know, make the best of it of a not great situation. We're here to explain that we're not retiring. I don't know if we'll ever really retire, but um, I mean, if we get asked to skate in the next 10 years, we'll be honored. But um, we're definitely slowing down. There's, that's not a secret, but uh, we've never once said that we're retiring. And um, we'd love to continue to skate um, as long as we feel healthy. And you know, like I said, it makes sense to leave our son at times or we can even bring him with us uh, continue to do that but uh, I don't know are you retiring no <laughs> not retiring. I'm not uh, we feel we'll great be, we'll be letting you know when we do uh, if we do ever but we feel great and we still love it and there's no reason to think about retirement and uh, but as Jimmy said I mean the business is slowing down so it's just normal that we are too and as our son grew uh, I think that we have the best life and we still enjoy it, so why not keep going? And Kurt's what, 45? Yeah. He's 145. We have like 10 years to go still, apparently. <laughs> 45, if, we can, if we can keep up to Mr. Rowdy. Yeah. Okay, so one last question. When and if you ever hang up the skates, even part-time, any other vision as to what you might include in your life professionally? Well, parenting number one. Um, Jesse's life is... Uh, priority for both of us. We love uh, seeing him in different sports now and, and being with him at home. Um, but obviously we both want to be able to do things and um, giving back is one important thing for me personally. I'm uh, working with Special Olympics Alberta. I would like to do some television work and uh, maybe some other promotional PR stuff or endorsement type things. What about you, David? I'm inspired. You know, is that a it sounds pretty pretentious, but I'm, I'm saying that in a very unpretentious way because anybody can inspire uh, a younger person. It could be the neighbor, it could be, uh, uh, you know, this, the guy that drives a booty in the rink. It's uh, be a good person to help people grow into their full potential. And whether it's in sport or different things, it could be a school teacher. Uh, but I have a feeling that sport would be involved for the rest of my life. It has become, you know, a part of me, a lifestyle. And, on blades, whether it's hockey blades or figure skating blades, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, inspire the kids. Wonderful. You're both Battle of the Blade champions, yeah. Olympic champions, world champions. Where does it end? Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Thanks, PJ. PJ.